All right, guys, so let's look at a couple practice problems here, just a few. Um, and let me get a pen. All right, so the first problem says <clears throat> calculate the delta G prime and K at 298 Kelvin for the following reaction. And we have here, obviously, a voltaic reaction, an oxidation reduction reaction. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to break this down into our half reactions. And we want to identify um, our reduction and our oxidation. So let's just start with that. So we have reduction and we have oxidation. Now, the reduction reaction here is oxygen and hydrogen is reacting, right? And um, we know that because here on the right, oxygen is negative 2, and here it's 0, so it has been reduced. So in order for that to happen, we have O2 as a gas, right? And 4 H+, plus, right, which is aqueous and four electrons is forming our two H2O as a liquid. And using the table in the book, I know that my E value for this, right, uh, excuse me, our, I should say reduction, R-E-D, R-E-D, there we go, is plus, 1.23 volts. Now I also need to do oxidation and in this case it is silver that is being oxidized. It's going from zero to plus one right there. And so we have four silvers, four AG solid, all right, is becoming four AG plus one, which is aqueous and obviously one electron. And again, from my table, I know um, my reduction potential is 0 0.80 volts. All right, so I'm using table 20.1, 20 20.1, 20 to get these two numbers. Now, I do need to find my E prime here. And so I'm going to do... Uh, 1.23 volts minus 0 0.80 volts. And that's going to give me an E value of 0 0.43 volts. And the reason that I need that E value is because in order to find delta G, I know that my equation is negative N F E right there. And so now I found E, I have my E prime. I know Faraday's constant. I need to know the number of electrons that are moving around. In this case, it is four, right? I've moved four electrons around. And so I'm just going to substitute that in. I'm going to say negative four. And then Faraday's constant is 96,485 joules volt mole. There we go. Or you could also say columns over moles, but we want the joule value there. All right, because this is for three volts. So now volts is going to cancel. I'm going to be left with joules over moles, which is what I want, right? So my delta G prime is going to be one negative, sorry, 1.7 times 10 to the fifth joules per mole. So there's the first thing it asked me to find. There's delta G. And delta G is negative, so we know this is a spontaneous reaction. And that makes sense because we got a positive number for our E prime. That's a good thing. And the second thing I need is to find K. And we know that, so we'll, we'll draw a line here, just like so. So we know that delta G uh, prime is equal to negative RT times the natural log of K. All right, and now we can literally just plug everything in and go from there. So negative 1.7 times 10 to the fifth joules per mole. It's going to equal negative 8.314, and this will be joules per mole Kelvin. All right, so that's our R value there, and we're at 
298 Kelvin, according to our problem, times the natural log of K. So I'm going to divide by negative 8.314 times 298K to give me the natural log of K. And that's going to tell me that 69 equals the natural log of K. And then I'm going to solve that and find that K is equal to 9 times 10 to the 29th. And that makes sense. I should have a really large K there. All right, so that's how I might do a problem that asks me to find standard free energy change, so delta G prime and equilibrium constant K. So those that, that would be how I would solve those. Now, let's take that same, uh, same question and look at it with a slightly different reaction. And now we're going to find E prime, we're going to find the standard free energy change, and we're going to find the equilibrium constant. And the reason that I'm going to do this is because I want you to see how um, the intensive property affects the math. All right. So again, we have our half reactions. So we have reduction, right, which is one half O2, because again, this is zero, this is negative two. So I have been reduced, right? That charge has gone down. So one half of O2 as a gas, plus I now only have two hydrogens. They're aqueous. And I only have two electrons. And this is going to result in one water as liquid. And then for oxidation, all right, same thing. Um, I have two silvers, two Ag solid, which is breaking down to form two Ag plus, which is aqueous, and two electrons. Okay. I still go to my table 20.1, all right, and my reduction is going to be 1.23 volts, and for this one, the reduction is going to be 0 0.80 volts. When I calculate E prime, this is an intensive property, so it hasn't changed at all. It's still 1.23 minus 0.8, and that's going to give me 0 0.43 volts, which is exactly the same as it was in the problem before. But now, when I calculate delta G, all right, I get negative 2 because I only have two electrons involved now. 8 point, or sorry, times 96485 joules per mole. Um, the pool, well, yeah, mold D doesn't matter, same thing. Um, and I have 0 0.43 volts. So we can see that the delta G has gone down by a factor of, you know, two, because this is the number that I changed, right? That's going to be kilojoules per mole. And obviously now when I plug this in and solve for K, we're going to find that K is equal to four times 10 to the 14th. So K and delta G both go down when I half the reaction but the E prime stays the same because it's intensive. All right now, in the next video, we'll look at the Nernst equation, all right, and we'll solve some of those.